In today's funny story joke, we're about to dive into a tale brimming with twists, historical quirks, and a plot twist that will leave you in stitches. Imagine a Victorian charity bazaar, a determined baker, and a cake with a secret so shocking it could make a bishop choke on his tea. What could possibly go wrong? Buckle up, because this one's a roller coaster you won't want to miss. Imagine Victorian England, a land where fainting couches were a must-have furniture item and gossip traveled faster than a handsome cab on a cobblestone street. Back then, raising money wasn't some flashy telethon with a sweaty man in a headset begging you to call a 1-800 number. Oh no, it was a delightful absurdity called a charity bazaar or fancy fair if you were feeling particularly posh. Think of it as a gossip convention crashing head-on with an arts and crafts market with a healthy dose of questionable homemade goods like crocheted teapot cozies that wouldn't keep a teacup warm for a penguin in the Arctic. Critics, bless their perpetually furrowed brows, scoffed at these sham products, arguing they stole business from proper shops. But honestly, who could resist a good cause? especially when it involved ladies in bustles the size of hot air balloons showing off their, ahem, unique needlepoint skills. Let's just say some of those embroidered handkerchiefs looked less like delicate flowers and more like psychedelic sea monsters escaped from a sailor's rum-induced nightmare. But hey, that was the charm of the Charity Bazaar, a delightful blend of philanthropy, questionable crafts, and enough social gossip to fuel a season of Netflix period dramas. In the quaint town of Whitby, nestled by the ever-churning sea, lived Aunt San, a baking legend. Her scones were rumored to cure the vapors, and her pies were so good they could make a vicar reconsider celibacy, though such thoughts were never uttered aloud, of course. But disaster struck the night before the annual church bazaar, like a rogue fog rolling in off the North Sea. Her masterpiece, a fruitcake destined to be the centerpiece of the event, decided to impersonate a pancake. Time was flatter than the cake itself, and Aunt San, resourceful as any Victorian lady, hatched a plan as ingenious as it was likely to land her in social Siberia. Picture this, a majestic cake, a frosted Goliath ready to conquer the taste buds of Whitby. But beneath this sugary facade lurked a secret darker than a chimney sweep's fingernails. Nestled in the center, like a throne fit for a porcelain monarch, was a toilet roll. A royal imposter indeed. A thick layer of icing sugar, applied with the trowel-like grace of a nervous bricklayer, became the imposter king's royal cloak. Aunt San, with the confidence of a magician about to pull a live badger out of a top hat, though such a feat would be wildly inappropriate for a church bazaar. Deep down, she knew she might have to resort to buying her own creation back. Because let's be honest, who else in their right mind would spend good money on a pastry that looked like it could give a toilet a complex? The morning of the bazaar dawned, and faster than you can say charity case, Aunt San's cake vanished like a magician's handkerchief, snatched up quicker than a vicar caught eyeing a barmaid's ankle. Panic seized Aunt San tighter than a corset on a particularly large lady who just discovered her favorite gossip was a complete fabrication. Who, in their right mind, had bought this potential pastry-based projectile? The next few hours were an agonizing waiting game. Each social interaction, a potential landmine of icing-covered shame. Every time someone complimented the luscious fruitcake, Aunt San felt like fainting dead away, a prospect that would have only caused more suspicion given the current state of her baked goods. The following day, fate would have its delicious way with Aunt San. She found herself at tea with her dear friend Clara. As the tea tray arrived, Aunt San felt her composure crumble faster than a custard tart at a picnic. There it sat, in all its glory, or lack thereof, the cake, the toilet roll throne, and all. But before she could confess her bakery blunder, Clara, bless her unsuspecting soul, beamed and declared, Aunt San, time to enjoy the cake. I slaved two days over. <laughs> In 
If you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.